welcome back. I had to because I was hitting against the YouTube ten minute limit. But all I was saying is we said you know cosine of minus a. So I draw drew you know a tri right triangle with a, and then I showed you minus a, and I said well all of all of the lengths are going to be the same, but now the direction of it, and we're kind of assuming this is on the unit circle. If if you don't remember the unit circle, maybe you'll want to rewatch uh, the videos we have on that. But I'm just showing you that the cosine of minus a is equal to this side over the hypotenuse. And this hypotenuse is the same as this hypotenuse, right? So cosine of minus a is adjacent over this hypotenuse, while cosine of a is adjacent over this hypotenuse. But it's the same thing. So we know that cosine of minus a is equal to cosine of a. And actually, by definition, that, that makes it a, I, I don't want to confuse you too much, but that makes cosine an even function. And I'll show you more. Actually, I should do a whole presentation on even and odd functions. Now let's see what sine of minus a is. Sine of minus a is equal to, so this is minus a. So it's this side, so it's the minus length of, you know, I mean, if I, let's just say, let's call this x. Let's call this y. And let's call this, well, let's leave that h. Right? If that is x, this is y, this length is y, then this length right here is minus x, right? So the sine of minus a is minus x over h. Minus x over h, right? What's the sine of a? Sine of a is equal to, this is a, opposite over hypotenuse, x over h. It's x over h, right? So sine of minus a is equal to, Minus one times x over h, right? Or this is just the same thing as, I mean, if we could multiply both sides of this by minus one, minus x over h, right? So sine of minus a is equal to minus sine of a. Oh, so, so let me clear this out and 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 rewrite uh, this identity. And I, as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm I'm just playing around with with. Triangles and uh, showing you that you know just using the basic Sokotoa, you can actually uh, discover a whole set of trigonometric identities. So let's clear that. And you know you might so a lot of these are it is useful to memorize. I normally don't advocating advocate memorizing, but it's it's helpful just to do things quickly. But I'd also advocate being able to prove it to yourself. So if you ever forget it and you don't have you know a cheat sheet available, you can prove it to you, you can prove it. And if you ever have to teach it, then you'll you'll be I think uh, able to ex explain the under underlying uh, themes a little bit better. So let's clear this. Let's let's see if we can discover some more trig identities. So we know that. So let's see if we what we could, let's see if we had sine. What's sine of a plus pi over two? A plus pi over two. Well, we could use our our handy sine of a plus b. Uh, identity which we have already proved, so we can use it now. So that tells us that it's the sine of a that equals the sine of a sine of a times the cosine of pi over two times the cosine of pi over two plus the sine of pi over two. And we're in radians, of course. I could this could have been uh, 90 degrees instead if we wanted to be in degrees. Sine of pi over two times the cosine of a. All right. Well, this equals the sine of a. What's cosine of pi over two, or cosine of 90 degrees? Well, that's when we're we're on the unit circle. We're we're pointing straight up. And so the x coordinate is is zero. I could draw it out, but I think you might want to draw the unit circle and figure it out for yourself. Or if you don't, you know, do it on a calculator. But you will learn that it is zero. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Plus sine of pi over two. For the same reason, we're pointing straight up on the unit circle. So the y coordinate or the sine coordinate is is one, right on the unit. You know, at one, we're at essentially the point zero one on the unit circle. So sine of pi over two is one. So then, and then times cosine of a. So sine of a times zero is zero. One times cosine of a is just cosine of a. So we we have a new useful trig identity. <coughs> Excuse me. Sine of a plus pi over two is equal to cosine of a. Fascinating. So really, this is just telling us that cosine of a is is the same thing as sine of a shifted. 
So if we were to think of this graphically, if we were to think of, you know, if we were to draw the graphs, if you sh if you shift si the sine graph to the left by pi over two, you get cosine. The, you get the cosine graph. And and if you haven't learned about shifting yet, don't worry about that. Or you might want to actually graph the two, and and I think you'll get a sense of of what I'm saying. So let's do, uh, I don't know. Well, another and, and another way to rewrite this exact same thing is the sine of a. Sine of a is equal to the cosine of a minus pi over two. Right? If you just you know, let's say I said that b is a is a plus pi over two. Right? Let's say I said, I said b is equal to a plus pi over two. Then we could say that this is you know this is b. And then this would be b minus pi over 2. I'm, I'm just switching around variables. I'm doing this in a much more loosey-goosey fashion than I normally do a lot of the videos. But I want to show you that a lot of this trigonometry can just be, you know, it's just kind of discovery. What's, uh, what's sine of a minus b? Oh, that looks like a new one, doesn't it? Well, we, we, let, let's, let's try to figure it out. Well, that equals sine of a cosine of minus b minus b plus sine of minus b times the cosine of a right well what do we know about the cosine of minus b we just before i cleared the screen we just figured out that the cosine of minus b since it's an even function is the same thing as the cosine of b so we can rewrite that as that equals the sine of a cosine of b and then what's the sine of minus b? Well, that's the same thing as the minus sine of b. In that last, the last, that's what we just proved that the sine of minus b that this is equal to minus sine of b. You could draw out the triangle and the unit circle if you don't believe me, but we just did that. So that, then we could say that that is equal to minus sine of b cosine of a. Interesting. I encourage you to do the same thing with the cosine of a minus b. These are all just you know we're, we're using you know one or two or three trig uh, identities together and 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 trying to come up with new things. And and I think at this point we've literally gone over everything that almost every trig identity you've you've seen in your book you can um, you should be able to 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 get there somehow just by keep on playing. And obviously all of these identities you can you know you can invert the sines and the cosines and the tangents and you can get um, you can get identities for secant and cotangent and uh, cosecant and, uh, and 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 keep keep playing around and I encourage you to do so and do it graphically uh, draw the triangles I'd also it's also interesting to sometimes actually draw the graph on the xy plane of say you know cosine of of x plus pi over 2 and, or cosine sine of x plus pi over 2 or sine of x and I think I'm, I'll in the future uh, do a video where I, I really do explore all of that well I, I hope I haven't thoroughly confused you I, I want to just kind of show you that uh, a lot of trig, it's it's really it all comes from Sokotoa and playing around with Sokotoa and triangles, and you can pretty much get um, you can pretty much solve for everything you learn in trigonometry. And if you don't have Sokotoa, at least the unit circle definition, um, which is actually better because it's more extensive. But anyway, that's all for now. See you soon.